Okay, last time we were looking at connecting derivatives, as in connecting the first derivative to the original function and connecting the second derivative to the original function and uh, what the relationships are there. We can look more specifically here at what uh, we were talking about right at the end, which is uh, how can you tell from a graph? You can obviously tell that this point is a maximum point and this point is a minimum point. But if you're doing it algebraically and you happen to find those points, you, you can't tell unless you have the picture. So what you do is you kind of visualize the graph. If you happen to find that this is a critical point algebraically, if you know that the derivative is positive on this side and negative on that side, then that's... Uh, that's enough to tell you that that has to be a maximum. If you know that this is a critical point at negative one, and you can't, you, ha you don't have the graph, but you do know that the derivative is positive over here and negative over there, that has to be a maximum. And similarly down here, if you know that's a critical point and you know the derivative is negative there and positive there, it has to be a minimum. So in here, this uh, when we talk about the first derivative test, when you're looking at something analytically. Um, if you have a critical point at some value c, so you know that at c, this is a critical point, so you know the derivative is zero. If you know on the, the left it's positive and on the right it's negative, so in other words, it changes from that to that, the only way that can be is if, it, um, if it's a maximum at that point. Okay, so I think you may have written this down last time, but maximum value at C. And I guess it's, you know, the maximum value is F of C, whatever that is. If you want that in there, doesn't matter. Would have been quicker to rewrite it. find it. The, the key part of this is is this. You don't really need to say of f of c. I mean, that's the, the whatever the y value is, is the maximum value. And then a picture would help there. So if you didn't draw a picture, something, right? If, if that's uh, positive on that side and negative on that side, this has to be a maximum value here. Similarly, the same thing the other way here. If you, uh, if you're going from negative to positive, then this has to be a minimum. I think it's kind of geometrically obvious there. You can find these things by just testing points the way we did last time. So if you find a critical point, you can just you know test a point on either side to find What's, hap what's happening with the derivative. And then if it doesn't change sign, it, there's no extreme value there. So it has to be something like, if you know that it's a critical point, means its derivative is undefined or it's zero, so it probably goes like that or the other way. Down like that. Okay, so that's at a critical point. Critical points are in the interior of the domain. If you want to talk about the end points, okay, end points. Again, this may be, when you write it out, it doesn't seem obvious, but it kind of is obvious. If, if you're looking at the left end point of a function, so if you know that, um, if you know that this is the end point of the function, so on for going to the right of that for x greater than a. So this is a. If the derivative is maybe we should keep this separate here. If the derivative is negative as you go to the other side, what does that have to be? That has to be a maximum. And if it's the other way around here, if it's greater after that, then it has to be a minimum.
The same is true at the other end. If you're talking about a right end point, so then you're looking to the left of that point. This is B here. And if you know that the, the derivative is negative on the other side of that point, okay, if this derivative is negative on the other side of that, it has to be a minimum value. I wouldn't go and memorize all this, just see why it is, and then it's pretty easy to think through for yourself if you need to. That x equals b. And then the other way, of course, if this is positive on the other side there, then this has to be a maximum value. That's what they call the, the first derivative test, just looking at the first derivative around the point that you're interested in. So if you want to know if something's a maximum or minimum, just look at the look at the derivative and use that to decide. We've already kind of done that. You know, you've found maximum values by looking where the derivative is zero. This is just kind of formalizing it. We were intuitively using that, knowing that if the derivative is zero there, you know, that's a possible place to look for a, a maximum or a minimum. I am assuming we're okay with that. This is just going to be um, applying that concept, finding critical points, uh, find the absolute and uh, local extreme values.